Good, good. Thank you. It's just such a pleasure to have you here and such an honor as well. And I'm just so excited to uh, share your expertise here with uh, Toronto Professional Women. So let's jump right into the questions that I'd like to ask you. So the first question I'd like to ask is about success. So can you tell us how you achieve your success? By being persistent. That's the number one thing. It's persistent, committed to the ultimate goal staying passionate about what I do and persistence and commitment to my clients, to my team, to my goals and um, to my passion. I love it. And if anybody watching right now has any questions for Laura, please feel free to. I'm not sorry to, to correct you. I'm, it's Lauren. Sorry. Did I say Laura? Like four times. <laughs> I thought you'd correct yourself. So I was ignoring it, but it's okay. It's a pet peeve because so many people call me Laura because my middle name is A, starts with an A. So it's Lauren A. So they often call me Laura. So it's like a little, sorry to correct you. I thought I was saying Lauren. Oh my gosh. You know what? People call me Christina. I'm Christina. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, next question I wanted to ask you. So can you share some of your biggest wins in your business or your career? I think the biggest wins are always when you hit the bottom and then you come out on top. And um, certainly uh, we hit the bottom at the beginning of COVID because nobody was moving. Nobody was doing anything. Nobody was investing. People were in a panic. I mean, a lot of people experienced this. Mm-hmm. And I turned to um, helping people get money from the Small Business Administration down here and even helping people get money from the um, the business development boards up there. And um, it was challenging because, it well, there were a lot of circumstances. But at the end of the day, I knew that my business would come out on top. And through COVID, developed the signature program we now promote, which is called How to Immigrate to Real Estate. And I don't know that that ever would have been developed except for the fact that people started investing remotely. So doors opened and then we went through them. So I think the biggest wins are always when you hit the bottom and then you find your way through, kind of like I did when my ex-husband was deported. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. It's it's never a straight, it's never like an upward hill. It's, you know, it can be like up and down. Yeah. Uh, if you don't face that, then something's up. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That makes sense. Um, all right. So I wanted to ask you a, a more specific questions about what, what it is that you do. So um, can you share why uh, Canadians should uh, uh, work with your team specifically? Well, first of all, I'm Canadian. So <laughs> that's the number one reason. But really, it comes down to the fact that I've been there, I've done that, I've been through hell, I came out to tell the story, and I work with so many Canadians, and we're the only full-service, comprehensive um, service provider in the industry. There is literally nobody else that does what we do, both in terms of helping people set up their real estate investing structure from other countries, mainly Canada, into the U.S., and in terms of figuring out how to set up the structure for real estate investing or a business or whatever it is they want to do, expanding their existing business and getting a visa. So we are a truly comprehensive concierge holistic service. All of the service providers work through us. So at the end of the day, we're your accountability partner. So if you if you value your time and your money, then you're going to work with a team like ours that really returns that value in spades because we really hold the hands of our clients sometimes to a fault and we just it's just the way I do business I don't know another way so it's amazing congratulations on the success thank you you're very welcome um so the next question I want to ask you is what makes you different from an immigration attorney Sure. So immigration attorneys do the legal work and uh, they don't help you find a business. They don't necessarily, I'm not saying this as a rule because I don't want immigration attorneys to freak out. But as a rule, they're not business. They're not business savvy. They're not business minded. They're attorneys. And being an attorney is great. I'm an attorney, 
but it doesn't train your mind to think from a business perspective or have business acumen. And most immigration attorneys only handle what we call our third phase. So we have a three phase program that phase one is finding the business, all the pre visa planning, the structure, the setup, the bank account, the tax ID, all the stuff you need mm -hmm. so that you can then start your journey to getting your US visa and your American dream. Phase two is the business plan and phase three is the legal. Okay. And we split it into a three phase program about a year ago because it's overwhelming otherwise. So the third phase is the phase that the immigration attorney handles. Mm -hmm. All right. We handle the whole, the whole package. So that's the main difference is that we really are the business savvy partner, truly your partner throughout the process all the way through to approval and after. Okay. That's amazing. Thank you so much for clarifying that because I think a lot of us are not quite sure what the difference is. Yeah, for sure. Uh, um, so just wanted to ask you a couple of closing questions and thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate oh, it. Always a pleasure. Oh, my pleasure. is absolute honor. You look so pretty, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You too. You look great. <laughs> I wish I was your age so I could have those beautiful like cheekbones and everything oh, I'm turning four. oh my god <laughs> 40 is the new 30 yeah yeah exactly well you know what I always said at 40 that's when success is coming in my life it's just like <laughs> real success. yeah it's happening <laughs> I'm convinced I think it's uh, going to 50 but that's the first story and 50 right yeah 50 yes um so uh what's the biggest lesson that you've learned that you want everyone to walk away with today don't try to do things yourself i it, it's funny i was just at my my rabbi's home we we learn once a week his his wife is an amazing uh educator and um i was talking with the rabbi and he was explaining to me how because they're do, they're building out this this retreat center and he said that there was a contractor that they were going to hire and the contractor had this huge number and they didn't want to spend it because they didn't know what the contractor was capable of and they were afraid. So they tried to do things piecemeal, right? And instead, it ended up costing him time, money, and a lot of peace, right? A lot of probably gray hairs. So <laughs> the lesson that I can share with you is, and I do this myself, when there's somebody to help you and guide you and hold your hand, don't try to piecemeal and save a few dollars. Don't be penny wise and pound foolish. Always, if your gut tells you that they're going to look after you, trust your gut. Not just for that, for everything. If somebody if somebody doesn't seem like they'll be a good client, don't take them on because you'll suffer. But at the end of the day, right, Christine, you and I have talked about this before, about some people that are more challenging than others. And at the, it, it's just so important to trust your gut and know that if you go with a concierge service, and I'm not necessarily talking about ours, I'm just saying overall, I don't want to have 50 people providing 50 different services. I want somebody to be accountable for all of those 50 people so that the stuff gets done. Because if not for that accountability partner, you're going to be banging your head against the wall trying to get stuff done. I'm dealing with a bar mitzvah right now where I have the same thing. So at the end of the day, you still have to make decisions, but go with your gut. Absolutely. It does make sense. That, that, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, last question is, how do we stay in touch with you? And also, do you have anything upcoming that you um, would like to share with us? And final, anything, if there's anything else you wanted to share with us today? Well, I will put some links. Um, we our, our website is investingacrossborders.net. We have master classes once a month. We had one yesterday. So if you want to access the recording, it is available on YouTube. Okay. YouTube, Investing Across Borders. Pretty much everything is Investing Across Borders. Okay. Um, that Our branding is Investing Across Borders. On Instagram, it's Investing Across Borders. If you have questions, it's Investing Across Borders, the number one at gmail.com, or we'll just leave it at that and make it easy. Investing Across Borders, the number one at gmail.com. And um, you can always reach out to me on Instagram, Facebook. We have a group called Canadians Immigrating to and Investing in the U.S. on Facebook. Um, but again, everything is around investing across borders. 
So we would love to see you. You can also connect with me in Toronto Professional Women's Network because I am always there at least as much as I can be. Yesterday, my master class was at the same time as the as the um, program, so I couldn't attend. But even if I can attend for one or two of the sessions, I really try because I really love the people. You guys are my people. I'm a Toronto girl, you know. Yeah. I grew up in Thornhill. So um, I went to Osgood. I went to York. So that's me. So connect with me and don't be afraid to ask questions. We are doing an ask, ask, ask the expert, which will be live in our Facebook group on, um, I think February 22nd at 7:30 PM. So you can ask your questions. You can also ask questions in the Facebook group as you have them. Mm-hmm. And, um, don't be afraid to reach out. People are always like, Oh my goodness. I don't, I don't know if the question is stupid. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Okay. Just ask. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. This is really so much fun and uh, an honor again to have you. Ah, you're such a sweetie. Thank you, Christine. Hopefully, I'll see you very, very soon. Thank you. All right. Have a good day, Lauren. Everyone. 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 Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to join the ranks of inspiring women making waves on the series or learn more about becoming a VIP member with us, head over to torontoprofessionalwomen.com and get ready to take your career journey up a notch.